fighting out of Brisbane, Queensland, Australia, Damien Piscara. What's up, folks? Welcome to the Wireless Podcast. I'm your host, Damien Brown, UFC and Army veteran. I created the Wireless Podcast to cover all things sport, lifestyle, physical and mental health. It's not about me, it's about the listeners. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook at Beatdown155 or subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Wireless Podcast, and hopefully we can produce some wicked content for you in the near future. And welcome folks, we're live here today with Rob Tenaloo, former NRL player. Welcome mate. Thanks mate, thanks for having me on the on the podcast. No worries, it's a pleasure, thanks for joining me. I'm a bit, I'm a bit out of the way but I appreciate the drive. Um, so uh, I guess um, got, you're doing some good things now, you know, for charity and stuff like that, former NRL player, um, probably a fair bit to talk through, talk through but we'll, we'll get through what we can. Um, but... Born in New Zealand, moved to Australia at a young age, by yourself with a mate. Yeah, correct. Uh, so I guess when we, if we go from the start, um, we had an opportunity to come over in 2000, and, oh, in 2000 with uh, New Zealand schoolboys and I was lucky enough to get uh, scouted and uh, there was another bloke, another friend of mine that uh, got a contract, so to speak, uh, to come over in 2001 and um, we both took the opportunity and come over from Christchurch at uh, 18. So no family here. I had one auntie and, um, yeah, one auntie and a cousin that was over here. But apart from that, it was all new. Uh, so when you did you live with your, your auntie or your cousin when you came here? No, we actually lived with um, the president of the club at the time, which okay. uh, was Darren Bell. He's passed away now. Uh, but he was involved with the club at West Panthers. Mm-hmm. So played there and, and got to stay with him for that whole year. West Panthers, I know. Yeah, yeah. West Panthers, mate. Um, so how how was how was adjusting to? I guess like maybe a little bit of a different way of life in Australia, but also just most people at any age when they move out of their hometown, let alone country, it's um it's quite an adjustment period with that homesickness, and you you hear a lot of young NRL players get that, you know. Yeah, moving away from home. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, especially, I guess for me, uh, being from Christchurch, uh, the dream was always to play NRL. That was mm-hmm. always my uh, my go to. And uh, when this opportunity came up, um, it was a stepping stone. And I guess there was uh, I was never gonna I was never gonna turn it down. I was always coming. So no matter what it was, I was always coming over. Um, the support of my dad and, and uh, my family. Uh, yeah, the, the the change was always going to be uh, uh, the move over was always going to be good. When I got here, yeah, it opened up opened my eyes up to a lot of things. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> definitely. Well, well uh, what was the um, if you if you can remember, what was the one of the hardest things you sort of dealt with as a young guy adjusting to, I guess, like a, a new way of life? Yeah, professional um, athlete. Yep, yeah, semi semi professional at the time, so straight out of school. Haven't done much conditioning or, or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and then coming to a West Panther system where I think uh, Ryan, um, Michael Ryan, not Michael Ryan, but anyway, he was the, he'd, he'd been the um, Queensland Maroons uh, strength and conditioning coach. And, yep. Um, you know, coming to, to their system in that and, and learn uh, those ways, you know, Brisbane, hot, January, pre season. Um, you know, that, that was a definitely shock to the system. But, um, you know, going, going throughout that period was uh, definitely an eye-opener and good experience. So. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of um, shocks to the system, I spent four days in Kaikoura. Oh, nice. Right? Beautiful. In February. Yep. Summer. Summer, mate. Beautiful. It was freezing, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I, I couldn't wait to get a hot coffee in my hand. I was wearing tracksuits and a hoodie yep. uh, for four days straight while everyone was running around in shorts and swimming. I felt like – I definitely felt like the odd one out, but – um. Beautiful place. Yeah, beautiful place. Beautiful um, seafood there as well. Well, I don't think, yeah, it was. Mm. I don't think it, it matters where you go with different climates. It's pretty hard to adjust. That's it. You gotta, yeah, that's it. And it just takes time. And once you adjust and uh, adapt to the conditions and whatnot, you know, things go well. So yeah. I was lucky that, you know, being a big boy, getting through the first uh, first few months, um, you know, it went all right. So Yeah. Mm. And uh, so you, you got over here and you, and you settled in. Um, where to from there? What 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 took you, I guess, to first grade? Well, so uh, after 
the season at West. Um, you know, when I first came over, I was originally um, meant to play Colts, so under 19s. I was only 18 at the time. Um, did the preseason, and uh, the coach at the time, Wayne Trelevin, uh, gave me a start in, in, um, uh, in preseason, and then pretty much from preseason, uh, stayed with the Cup side uh, throughout the whole year. So uh, we were the bottom team. We were the, I think we finished there last. Um, so it was easy to shine. It was easy. <laughs> it wasn't even <laughs> easy to shine. It was just you know being involved. Yeah. Uh, and, and a side was a it was a good side. Yeah. Uh, I mean you know when I say good side it was good blokes. Yeah. Uh, learn a lot. Um, and even though we were uh, dead last, it, w- it was just the best time of my life, mate. So I yeah. uh, had a good season that year, got rookie of the year with the West Panthers and then uh, was lucky enough at the time, uh, Broncos were doing their feeder mm-hmm. uh, with the Broncos. Um, so there was a, that, that, that was the opportunity where it came. So, it was, uh, so you went to the Broncos first? Correct. Yeah. 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 And uh, who was the coach at the time? Coach, mate. Wayne yeah. Bennett was the coach. The greatest the coach in NRL history. Coach, mate. Yeah. yeah, great coach. I uh, I've got a, I've followed the Broncos. I mean, I was I was four when the Broncos started in '88, but I was heavily influenced by my father, yeah. as is my son. Yeah, cool. We don't play rugby; we play Broncos. So, um, but uh, like uh, wherever Wayne has gone in the next few parts of his career, when he went to like St George and that, I always seem to, I always want the Broncos to win, but I always seem to be happy when when his teams win. Yep. Um. Except for Newcastle, because I'm pretty happy that they sucked after a while. <laughs> Is there right? I've got a few mates that go for Newcastle, so um. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that was always funny, but yeah, I, I always um, I always found it pretty cool how he, I mean, he, to the media he seemed like really dry, yep. unemotional, and uh, <coughs> short, I guess. But I I could always I always appreciate the way that for whatever reason in the background it it'd, it'd be really interesting to talk to him, but um to understand. What he did that yep. made players tick. Yep. You know, like for a guy that his media presence was just really dry and short. Oh, yes. yeah. He clearly did something with the players that yep. inspired them to play, whether it was for their mates or for him. Yep. Yeah, awesome. Um uh, when I, you know, when I was here, I didn't I was, you know, I guess I was unlucky not to spend much time with him uh during my time there that uh, that year with uh mate, that that uh, two thousand two um Broncos squad was stacked. So um, I spent most of my majority of the time with the Tom McClyde's that were in there in, uh, playing, you know, just reserve grade there. Um, and then lucky enough to get um, an opportunity to play first grade. Um, and it wasn't under Wayne. It was yep. under Craig Bellamy. Yep. You know what I mean? And uh, there was a f- whole lot of us uh, that had come in because the top squad were predominantly involved the origin side. So, um, yeah, we did, you know... The only time I got to talk to Wayne, right, uh, outside of it, was after the after my debut, and he offered me um, they offered me a contract, um, and at the time, after that game, there was you know obviously other other offers. The Storm, Storm was yeah. one. Yeah, there, I had a few. There was a few clubs in that there, yeah. you know. So, um, but yeah, I ended up going with the Storm. So, yeah. um, but the only time I really got to talk with. With Wayne was after that that uh, that debut. With I the, think the Bronx. I think that people in general, um, when they when they, I guess when they think about athletes and like the top of the food chain, as yep. far as like you know Wayne's a coach, but like CEOs and that, they think you talk to them all the time. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, I often get asked, "What was it like to meet Dana White?" Yeah, okay. <laughs> I fought the UFC for three years, <laughs> right? Yeah, I met the guy once, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and my interaction with him was at a weigh in. Yep. I uh, just weighed in. Uh, and he shook my hand. He said, "Good luck tomorrow, kid." Yeah. And the only thing that popped into my head was, "I'm fucking 32 years old." <laughs> <laughs> like, he just called me kid. But anyway, that was my only ever interaction with him. Um, it's funny, you know, like the organisations are big, and uh, you sort of like there's still good opportunities, you know, to say that you you shook their hand and you had a conversation with them or whatever, you know. That's right. Yeah. Um, but uh, onto the storm, <clears throat> which obviously every Brisbane fan is. A fan of, yep. Um, An adopted side. Yeah. How was that? Does that, that was, uh, climate change again? Yeah, again. Yeah. So no, that was um, that was that was good. So um, you know, sign with the sign with the storm um, after my debut. Um, I go down there, and then um, at the time, Mark Murray was meant to coach. 
he signs me on, then go down, he gets the sack, and uh, Craig Bellamy signs on, and then he, he moves down, and yep. um, you know, we were sort of down there at the same time. Um, I, at the end of uh, that 2002 year, I suffered an injury, so um, my first uh, neck injury, I had mm-hmm. a, um, I come in and I scored a try at West Panthers, uh, playing with the Tuma Clydesdales, uh, nothing, no malice or anything in it, uh, just dived and just two guys come and collided. And um, and damaged my neck, um, and then uh, well, I got sent away to hospital and that, and then uh, I was luckily I got released, but they found that uh, I had a bulging disc, um, so I, I ended up signing with uh, with Melbourne, and then going down with an injury, and then going through and, and getting surgery that um, that off season. So yeah. Um, yeah, it was that first year I was there it was pretty. Again, it was a climatization. Yeah. You know, got yeah. to climatize. I'm down there with an injury. Um, you know, things are a bit tough, but um, I'm still trooping on, I guess, and, and uh, trying to get things uh, sorted with. Me so, you're at a <coughs> at a new club, new people, you know, whether it's new teammates, new coaches, the whole lot, injured, yep. and not sure of your future. I mean, imagine even as an NRL player with a contractor, you know, being constantly injured is uh, and away from home. Yep. Oh, it's probably only been a couple of years by then, right? Correct, yeah, that's right. And so um, how tough was that? I imagine that's pretty tough on most people. Uh, yeah, again, it's, uh, I'll keep coming back to, you know, that was the dream. My, my dream was always to, to play in our out. I'm fortunate again to get my second contract. Uh, I moved down to Melbourne. Um, I moved down to Melbourne, which is, you know, even with my injury, that, you know, the, coach, uh, the management were uh, reassuring that, uh, you know, that wouldn't affect anything. And I was always about just getting the surgery, getting it done, uh, getting on the right track and coming back and, and um, you know, trying to be, trying to earn a spot and be successful in the, within the club. You know, yep. so. And um, and you overcame that injury? I overcame got to the it. field? I got to the field, yeah. yeah. So I made it, uh, the plan was always to make it to debut on my 21st, oh, for Melbourne. Um you know, just before or after my twenty first and uh that that dream came the dream came true for, for Melbourne. I've got number twenty one uh jersey. They that they especially uh made that for me. Uh, didn't last long. I, I uh come on. I was probably I re- you know, think thinking back now, I shouldn't have played. I was still probably carrying a bit too much weight and yeah. uh you know, again when I think about it now my head wasn't in the right in the Hans, right it's a wonderful thing. Uh, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> You know, anyway, I make my I make my debut for Melbourne. I play the Roosters. Uh, my first run, I think, I get knocked out. Um, <laughs> so you know, and then I, I think I played probably ten, uh, ten to fifteen minutes. You know, yeah. so uh, yeah, it was it wasn't a memorable one, but yeah. you know, I still got to to debut for the for the Storm. That's yeah. awesome, man. And um, and how many how many years or like how how many games you end up playing down there? Before so for you? Melbourne, I only played uh, five games. Yeah, um, and then I moved on again. So. Yeah, five games all up. The first year I was down there, I was um, so obviously injured, so I, I um, pretty much counted that out. And then 2002, 2003, and then 2004, so three years. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, what's it like? I mean, Melbourne's well known for being a premier club. Um, they must have like pretty good systems in place. What's it like to be around that kind of level, I guess? I mean, there's... Uh, all NRL clubs are at that level. Yep. Right? That's, that's, there's no negative towards others. But, look, there's certain clubs that are known for being, you know, premier clubs and they have higher standards or whatever it is. Yep. They operate better. Um, I know that was early Craig Bellamy yeah. time, but it must have been good to be around that level of a uh, football team oh, when you're looking back. Yeah, most definitely. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're top side. They've got... Uh, like you said, good good system in place, and uh, the people there are pretty good. Um, you know, you hear it all the time because they're so isolated and away from Sydney and, and I guess Queensland. You know, they they're a lot more family orientated, and um, you know, just uh, the, the the togetherness is is uh, very strong, very strong down there. You know, so um, yeah, I wish I was down there a bit longer. Uh, Do you think that um that helps? Like bring the team together also helps the fact that they're in they're in AFL territory, I guess, to a degree. I know it's a, Melbourne's the sporting capital of Australia and whatnot, yeah. but 
but it's you know they are in kind of like an area where any time they're playing they get 20,000 in that stadium which is packed yeah, yeah. Uh, you know across the road there's 80,000 at the MCG yeah like uh, that, mate when I was there when I was there um, and during my time there was only you know the top one would be 10,000 yeah right 13,000 you know uh, the back paper would be one page one yeah little, you know what I mean so uh, meanwhile they got back to back games over at the MCG, MCG. pulling 80,000 yeah 100% you know, so that's got to help bring bring that team together knowing they're in an environment where they need to perform and yeah, definitely increase definitely. The, the club's sort of level. Um, and then you went to the, the great North Queensland club, the yep. Cowboys. Yep, so, uh, you know, I had an opportunity there after the Broncos <coughs> to go there early. Um, but, you know, obviously we chose a storm. Uh, after Melbourne, I, uh, I was involved actually in an indiscretion and that's probably why uh, I got released. So, you know, I moved, moved up here to... To back to Brizzy and I played out of Norths. So at the time, Norths were um, <laughs> Norths were uh, the feeder club for for Storm. So okay. um, I played indiscretion. In yeah, indiscretion. In house? Uh, it was in house. Yeah, it was a uh, it was in Is house. Is it off limits? Oh, look, you know, uh, you retired now. Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> um, there was a. I went out on one. I went out one night, and then um, that's where it starts for most where, NRL players. That's, that's where it all starts. <laughs> that's right. So, you know, nothing is off limits here. So, uh, I went out one night. I uh, had a big night, and uh, arrived to training on the Monday. Um, and then there was an in-house drug test. Um, when we did the drug test, my name got called out, and then I get, uh, you know, get asked to to go and, and do the bottle. Yeah. Uh, luckily, I guess it was a, an in-house one, and it wasn't a, um, a sanctioned one. Yeah. That's right. Yep. So um, you know, I've got stories. So I could go either way with this, but at the end of the day, I have to accept it, and that's what I that's what I did. You know, so uh, get done from marijuana, and then oh, um, Jesus, and and now and now yeah. that's that's actually legal in most um, most sanctioned. Like I know with the UFC, yep, there's like a. In competition period of forty eight hours with your soda. Yep, that's the only forty eight hours you can't test positive for weed. Yeah, right. Outside of that, it's it's good to go. Yeah, yep. Um, but yeah, it's you know that, again that's an error thing, right? Which we talked <laughs> about right. at the that's, start. That's an error thing. Yeah, I don't um, know. Maybe it was just a you know just a young kid earning big money and um, just living the life, mate. Like us, you know, I played, I played one game for the Bronx, which you know skyrocketed me up to to get all these offers, and then. End down at end up down at the storm and haven't even played a game yet and um, you know I'm, I'm I've got good, I'm on good money and doing this and that haven't even bloody played a game yet you yeah. know what I mean so um, yeah things get caught up yeah um, you just got to live and learn and I think and it's normal moving. man that's it you know, yeah hundred like percent you know that's like a really that's really a nothing <laughs> it is in the world of sport you know but yeah, uh, yeah that's it yeah but uh, it could have been way worse. Oh, 100%. You know, there's yeah. footballers doing stuff all the time, whether they mean it or not, yep. you know. Um, but, yeah, so so anyway, you, you departed the Storm, played with Norse, yep. their feeder club. Did you play with them just till your contract was out? Is that what happened? Yeah, that's, that's what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I played, um, so I get released, played my contract out with Norse. Um, I end up back with uh, Wayne Trelevin, who was my first coach at um, West. So play under him. <laughs> awesome. Had an awesome year. We had a great team. Um, and then I was actually onto my manager trying to get me a start in England because I really wanted to travel and you know just just get out and, and do something different. Yeah. And he said no, just stay in Brizzy. I'd oh, stay in, in in Aussie. You know, you're still good enough to to try whatever. And I, I, for me at the time, I'm just like I just want to travel and have, you know. You always want to play footy, right? Yeah, I just want to play footy. Yeah. We get a contract uh, up to North Queensland. Um, you know, it's nothing near what what my. Um, Contract was with with Melbourne, but you know it was a start, and um, yeah, move up, move up to um, North Queensland for the two thousand and uh, six six season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what was it like? Uh, that was JT was still around there. Yeah, yeah, JT was there. Um, man, we had some we had some good players there as well. Uh, you know, I remember going they, up to they played the Tigers in the final. Was that that year? Uh, yeah, that was the year before. Oh, yeah, that's before right. Yeah, the old Benji Marshall flick pass. Yeah, with Pitt yeah. To Richards. Yeah. So um, no, that, so I come in that that next year. Yeah. Um, 
Make sure you're up to North Queensland. Uh, yeah, beautiful spot. Hot. Uh, muggy. I'll get it. I lived in Townsville in Did 2007. You, yeah. Well, I won't say any more so I, so I, uh, I joined the army in 2006. I got posted to Townsville yeah, from... Right. Uh, well, I was in Brisbane beforehand, but then I got posted to Townsville. It yeah. is hot, hot as there. shit yeah. up there. Hot, you know, like so. you, can, you can acclimatise to the cold pretty easy. You yep. just wear more clothes. Brisbane's not too bad, you know, but uh, but that January, end of December, January, February in, in Townsville is horrendous. Yeah. Um, so. yeah, um, yeah, fond memories. November, December, uh, the long runs, five, you know. Oh, the pre-season. Runs. Yeah, the pre-season, mate. Pre-season. Once it got into winter, it was beautiful. Yeah, it was nice. Good. Yep. Um, and and um, you obviously had a career ending career ending injury. Yep. In uh, in Townsville, in how Townsville. long were you playing before, like in Townsville before that happened? I think that happened. Uh, so round eight, oh, I can't remember now. The first the year. That was yeah, it was the first year. Yeah. So first year, um, man, that was probably my best best year um, of footy. Uh, we had a really great, um, really really strong. School. Uh, squad um, with the young guns at the time. There's a reserve grade, um, and then just the top squad was, you know, was uh, was pretty strong on that as well. So yeah, played all my games and um, in the reserve grade and did really well. And then um, got an opportunity to to um, suit up for North Queensland. We played Melbourne. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Melbourne down in Melbourne. So yeah. that was that was pretty cool. Yeah, nice. Yeah. You know? um, and there's an, uh, another funny story here, actually. <laughs> so, because I was pretty, you know, pr- I was pretty pretty loose, I guess, um, back when we were growing up through that, yeah. that whole period when I was when I moved over and, and so forth, because obviously... Well, you got no, no parents to whoop you. Uh, well, that's... So you're, you're living a life. I, you know, I, I get it. Like, you're a professional athlete yep. and there's plenty of attention, plenty. money, yep. everything that goes with it, in it you know... And when I say money, I mean like in a sport that's been around for long enough that it's got to a point where you're making good money, yeah, and uh, you don't have to work. Yep. Yeah. So you, you kind of live in. I, I totally. I could definitely appreciate that. Yep. Yep. So I make my debut for the Cowboys, and we're down in Melbourne. So I'm like, yeah, I think we, I think we won that game. I can't can't remember, but you know, down I'll see the boys. I want to catch up with the boys. So we catch up with the <laughs> catch up with the with the Storm team. <laughs> Um, so I catch up with him, and you know we're just having a fun. We're just we're just drinking. So um, look at the watch. It was you know five o'clock. You know I'm at the casino in the morning. Going, Damn it! You know it took, I think it took me. I think we were staying fifteen minutes from the from from the cast. It took me probably five minutes to get back to the to the hotel because I just sprinted. So as I come back, um, I'm like having a look everywhere, and then I come through the doors. So you had a curfew, right? We had a curfew. Okay. Yeah. Oh no, we didn't have. Oh, no, sorry, we didn't have a curfew. But yeah. it wasn't you know I shouldn't be coming home at five thirty, yeah. six o'clock in the morning. You yeah. know when when the butt team bus is at going in at six thirty. Yeah. Anyway, come through. I'm having a look around um, as I head through the foyer. Where do I see um, Graham Murray with the coach? Yeah. yeah, he's got his paper and he's just he just looks at me and he just goes, "Yep." And then uh, I take off, get ready, jump back on the bus, shitting yourself the shitting whole time. I was just going, "Yep." And then, you know, after that, I wonder, oh, why did I get a start? You know, I'm killing it in reserve grade and then, um, you know, not getting a start. But luckily, I'll get a start towards the end of the season. And then just unfortunately, that's that's when the, the bloody injury happened, you know. So um, so did anyth- anything come up about that trip? No, no, nothing come up about the trip. But, you know, he, he made sure that uh, he got his point across to all the boys. So yeah. Make sure that, you know. We've got standards. A good indirect attack. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> indirect attack. <laughs> but yeah, that's right, you know. So, uh, yeah, mate, like I said, hindsight, mate. Yeah. yeah. I would change mate. a lot of things. Um, so the injury, you broke your neck? No, I didn't break my neck. I actually damaged the spinal cord. So uh, oh, so That's even worse. Yeah, yeah. So first injury, um, first injury, bulging disc. That goes on to, yep. you know, that's pushing on the um, nerve, on the spinal cord. Get that sorted. You know they uh they they operate on that um take a bit of hip from the I uh, take a bone from the hip fuse it together and then um you know away you go. I, old mate uh, that did the surgery um said to me I said to him well you know what's the worst that can happen? He goes well, obviously um you know if it was anything worse you'd, you'd be um you wouldn't be walking or anything. And I said what's your advice? And he goes oh if you're my kid 
I wouldn't, I would tell you not to play. And I was like, oh, well, lucky, you know, my dad, I'm going to play. So that was in Melbourne, right? That was in Melbourne, yeah. yeah, that's right. So anyway, we get that, get that sorted. And then uh, the actual career um, ending injury uh, was uh, damaged spinal cord. So the impact that caused it, when we come into impact, um, my vertebrae, there was no flex. So with the impact that come on it, um, yeah, it sort of just caused damage to the to the spinal cord there on impact. So yeah, and um, when you're on the field and that happened, given that you've had a neck uh, injury before, yep. Um, like what's what's going through your mind besides? Well, I assume probably well, I don't know, pain, no pain, no, nah, no pain. Couldn't feel a thing. I couldn't feel anything. Yeah, um, which is probably worse, right? Yeah, because you're like. This should hurt, but it's not. It's not. Uh, what was I thinking? So I was I was awake for everything. So it wasn't <laughs> like I got knocked out or anything. Um, they were just. I remember our club doctor saying, um, "Stop moving," and I said to him, "I am. I'm not moving." And but my legs were went into shock, and the body was moving, and I just didn't know. So um, they said it's like a the delayed reaction time mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, but, you know, I was never, there was, I didn't think, I think I've only got scared one time when um, it was just me and my, uh, my wife now to, um, in the hospital. I think it was early in the morning, mm-hmm. just thinking, fuck, what's going on? You know, what are, what are we, what's happened here? Yeah. So um, I think that probably only went on for the, that, that, throughout that night until the, the next morning. And then after that was just, uh, was all, you know, fuck, I'm going to be, I want to make sure that it, you know, I, I come right. So um, we had a Cowboys din- uh, dinner or social thing the next uh, Sunday, and I remember telling Janelle, my, my wife, saying, "Don't worry, babe, it's all good. I'm going to make it. We'll be there." And she was like, uh, "You know, yeah, just, right. You no, know, nah, I don't think so." And I said, well, that's no, no, that. No, we're going to be right. We'll be right. That's that um, athlete thing. Look, I get that. Like your mindset is so. Like you said. No matter, nothing was going to ever stand your way of playing footy. Yep. It's the same thing, right? You're like, no, I'm good. Is that positive yeah. reinforcement to you? So like, the athletes have the ability to, I guess, self-motivate, yep. positively look at things. And usually for injuries, the, the highs are so high, like everything else, yeah. and the lows are so low. So the depression for an athlete from injuries is so much – I wouldn't say more than everyone, yep. but I would say it's significantly different. For someone who is uh, training 20, 30 hours a week and uh, whether it's training heavily or yep. just, you know, training. That's um, yeah. But yeah, they go from that to nothing um, as opposed to the, you know, the average kind of person working on a computer and yep. hurting themselves and having to spend some time at home. Yep. Um, How did you... How did you deal with like post injury? Was it still like just did you did you always feel like you were just going to play footy again, or uh, did you know? No, I uh, I look my if my my the decisions was you know was to look out for the family, so I had to really think of that. Um, I guess and um, yeah, it was pretty hard to say you know because that's all that's to to be honest that's all I knew that's all I had was just playing football, making good money and, um, you know, trying to make something of of, uh, of whatever and, and support the family. But, um, yeah, we, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was sad, but at the same time we had to, you just have to keep moving on, you know, so. Um, and the, I imagine the Cowboys were, um, like, awesome as far as support and that went. Yes, yeah, so Cowboys were, were good. Um you know, I won't go too much into it. I got, I did get offered um, a job uh, with the Cowboys at the time when I come through my recovery. So it took probably, uh, took me probably a couple of weeks to, no, probably a week to walk again. Um, yep. And even though when I was walking, um, you know, it was like really staggered and and so forth. And uh, the the overall recovery process, uh, rehabilitation, and that was probably about three months. <laughs> Uh, to learn to do everything, pretty much uh, go to the toilet, um, you know, just cutting up your meals and this and that, you know. Was it was there ever a moment where they said you're like you're not walk you're not going to walk again? Um, 
I don't think they were. I can't recall. Or damage was was, was the, the surgeon's confident that you were gonna. Yeah. You're gonna get back. Yeah. It's just gonna be time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, again, very very lucky in in that respect. Eh, that's you know, awesome. So. Well, awesome that the there was the positive side to it. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of people that don't that don't get that obviously. Yeah. Um. So. So, once you um of oh, the. I'm sure there was more to it, but um, <laughs> but footballers yep. like fighters and anyone that works for the government and anyone that works for anyone that's pretty much not a private business, it's pretty easy just to be a number and just be just like sort of disposed of. Yeah. But um, once you decided not to take a job up there, um, you moved back to Brisbane. Correct. Yeah. And so started coaching. No, yep, yep. So moved back to Brizzy, mate. That was uh, so that that last year of mine, uh, two thousand seven, was probably the the toughest year. It was a big year for us, for, for myself and and my wife. Now, um, you know, when when I did have my recovery, they did say that I would never have any more kids, um, and uh, some reason. That's, that's uh, the next year oh, we had a kid, you know. Yeah. So uh, did you have, did you have any before that? <laughs> yeah, I had uh, t- I had one. Yeah, so Alizé's Alizé's my oldest, and uh, we had one while we we're up in Townsville, and then I've got I was blessed to have another two more. You know, so, so you um, weren't going to have kids, and now you got four. <laughs> no, I've got uh, three. Oh, three. three. Yeah, uh, three sweet. Now. Oh, yeah, two more after. Yeah, it. yeah, 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 yeah cool. Two more after. So yeah, going back to two thousand seven, my you know I retire. Uh, we moved back to, to Townsville, uh, moved back to Brisbane because, um, you know, we didn't have any family support up there. Um, my wife uh, didn't really enjoy it, her time up there. I was a rat back up there. Yeah. Um, so we moved back, we moved back to Brizzy because um, she's got uh, her sister living in, uh, in Brisbane. So uh, we moved back down. Uh, we buy our first house, you know, so at the time no one said, you know, everyone said we wouldn't get a house for under 300000 we get a house in Brackenridge. Um, you know, for under three hundred thousand, that was awesome. Oh, the pride of Brisbane, the pride of Bracken Brisbane. Ridge, Bracken Ridge, mate. Yeah. So I haven't looked back. We haven't. You know, we've got our second house now, so you know that's that's home for us. Um, so yeah, we go through that. Um, we get married as well. Um, you know, all in that, all in that one year. It was a year. It was a massive year for us. Um, yeah. Just to. Yes, uh, transition, yeah. transition everything again, yeah. Going from what was uh, the only goal in your life to setting new ones and yeah. trying to make changes, trying to make changes, yeah, that's right. So, um, um, I, I understand it like just from my point of view, like I'm obviously still competing, and I just don't know. I, I always think about like what is it that makes you go, okay, that's enough. I couldn't imagine it just being taken away from me, oh, like that would just fucking tear me to shreds, yeah. But, um, you know, I'm not getting you any younger either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, well, you know, I, I'm, I retired in 2007, so um, I don't play any footy or whatever. And then um, there was, uh, you know, I joke around, I'll get to, because like, I, when I retired, I was only 24 when I retired. Yeah. So, you know, I come into at the NRL system at 19, finish at 24, you know, it was short, fast life. Um, and then you know I've, I've got to live this next life and next journey, go through this next journey. Um, so get to get to thirty, get to about thirty, thirty-two, um, and I start joking to the wife about oh playing rugby league again. You know she's like you're bloody mad. You know the family's going nah you're an idiot don't be a dick this and that. And I said no no well, I'm going to play masters. You know so masters over thirty fives. Um, and I really, I really dumb it down, and I just say, you know, it's only two hand touch, this and that, and there's old people playing and this and whatnot, and um, yeah, I end up playing, and now I'm playing open, so this is my third year playing seniors, yep. which is uh, which is which is awesome. So, so s- you just said thirty five plus, thirty five plus. Yeah. Oh, you're thirty two, right? Nah, I'm thirty eight. <laughs> no, didn't you say you were thirty two at the time when you brought oh, at it the up? Time, yeah, 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 at the time. And yeah. so, did you have to wait a few years? No, I had to wait a few years. Yeah, yeah. so. Or was that nearly 11 years since I played footy? And the hardest person to ever convince anything to is always the wife. Always the wife, that's yeah. right. So Spe- especially after you just had a spinal cord injury. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but um, right. enjoying it now? Loving it. Yeah, yeah loving it. Um, I've always enjoyed the coaching thing. That was always my thing, uh, especially with my older son. It was always uh, about giving back um, and just doing uh, what I can for him. And then also I just love uh, helping kids, you know, especially kids and then, 
the coaching, my coaching roles and that it has helped me get, uh, you know, uh, up to a standard now where I, I want to be. And then, um, you know, and also playing footy alongside your mates and that and family is, is awesome. So I, um, I can relate definitely in the sense that, um, you know, passing it on. So I thought to myself about two years ago, like, what is it? That I'm going to do when I'm done fighting. Like I spent 12 years making your family sacrifice as yeah. well. Yeah. You don't go without you, and you and you've learned all these skills and you've achieved such great achievements. Mm. You know, and whether it's one game in the NRL or fucking Cameron Smith games in the NRL, it doesn't really matter. That's you know, right. like yeah. do you walk away and I don't know, work in a jail, work in a hospital, or yeah. clean clean a school, or like, or do you do you pass it on? Yeah. And I, I feel like the me personally, and I'm sure that's that's the same way you feel, as you just said, is passing it on is really rewarding oh, to 100%. the next generation. Most but um, most definitely. But the, like, I'm not sure about you, but I feel like when one of your own athletes, or whether it's the kids or whatever it is, when they have a win, it's almost as good as what it was when you had a win. That's what I feel. Oh, th- most definitely. Like yeah, when 100%. one of my fighters wins, yep. like I feel like I need to climb the cage from the outside yeah. to get in to celebrate <laughs> with them. Yep. Um, and, and I feel like that's when you know you're in the right place. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, you know, I've got a good mate of mine that's, uh, uh, that we grew up playing footy together. We went to school together. We did our senior years together and that, and good, good, uh, good footy player back in his day. And his son just debuted um, last week for the Cowboys, all right? So, um, you know, I messaged him, and we were just as proud as, as the family yeah. because, uh, you know, he's come from the community. Uh, we know we knew him as uh, since he grew up, and um, you know it was like we celebrated it uh, his debut and that with him also. You know, yeah, so that's great. There's heaps of those those moments where we got with with kids, whether it's make, making NRL or making a rep team or or, or whatever. It's uh, those little wins. If you're part of it, it just makes uh, you know everything uh, so special. Way so, and that's and that's what coaching is all about. Like if you don't feel it that as a coach, then probably do need a job but <laughs> but I, I definitely feel like as a coach it should be as rewarding f- f- to see people achieve greatness as what it was when you did it yourself so um that's awesome man so you're coaching at Norths now I'm coaching yeah. at Norths uh just part of the 20s squad yeah. there um yeah awesome awesome opportunity that uh, come up last year and um unfortunately you know due to the COVID stuff and uh, and whatnot it was um Sort of short lived. We've, we've been able to continue the roles, uh, just not um, as I guess uh, as consistent as, as we could. But you know, we're um, we're still catching up. Um, early stages, there was Zoom meetings and all that, just just to make sure the boys were right. And uh, I think that club, Norse club, um, Devils itself, is is in a, in a good spot. The Q Cup side. So, yeah. have you ever <laughs> considered trying to coach like NRL or higher, making a full? Career out of it? Oh, look, I'd, I'd love to. That that would be awesome. I'd like a, it would be a dream actually. You know, just to be involved in one of the, not even a head coach, but just a, a part of a, um, an organisation like in the NRL. You know, that would be that's the next best thing, I guess. When you, when you're an ex player, like an assistant to Kevy, hey, at the Broncos, Kevy, you reckon? Yeah. At the Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean that's that that would be pretty cool. To like get back into the organisation, like a big organisation, yeah, yeah. and uh, and be a part of the operations as opposed to a, the you know the player side. Yeah, It'd be definitely. nice to see the the yeah. difference as well. Um, and obviously, for someone who took three months to you know cut yeah. your food up and learn how to walk again and all that sort of stuff yeah. properly, um, you recently ran a hundred and twenty kilometres. That's 100? right. We did a hundred and sixteen. Hundred and sixteen. Yeah, sixteen yeah. kilometres. Uh, it was uh, originally 100 k's, um, to, but we ended up doing the 116. Um, we did it for a young fella, uh, Hendrix, who suffered a, who was out, um, where was he, at uh, Chermside, at Paul's there, and he was just uh, running around um, on their team breakup, and uh, yeah, just sort of fell asleep, and um, you know they, they found out they suffered a brain hemorrhage, and then uh, the brain hemorrhage led to a... Uh, Findings of a of a brain tumor. So we did we did the um, fundraiser and um, and that for for him and the family. To, that's awesome. To raise some money. So yeah, yeah that's 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 cool, man. Like 
people that give back to the community is, um, yeah, I wish more people did it. It's it's pretty nice. Um, and so how much money did you guys raise for it? It went straight to them? It went straight to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was in our account. And when we seen their account, we were like, oh, babe, should we just, nah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Ooh, that's how, a, how good is that? Well, how's the third house? How's the third house sound? <laughs> no, no. But, uh, yeah, we ended up raising 63000 in five weeks. So um, massive effort. And that was just through... Um, just for close friends and family and um, them getting the word out and yep. getting the exposure um, to, to everyone we uh, myself Jaden Nikarima nephew of mine um, it, we, we both did the did the run and organised the fundraiser my wife um, yeah, Wait, did you say Jaden Nikarima is your nephew yeah yeah, yeah right yeah. that's good because I know one of his other uncles oh do you yeah, <laughs> yeah. plenty of uncles yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah that's that's awesome man yeah, that, good on you. Awesome. That's um, that's good stuff. I yeah. try to raise money for veterans and that here and there as well. So yeah. it's um, it's always it's always nice to see people not just yourself do that, but the people that contribute to contribute, that, you know, yeah. and make it and make it worthwhile. So um, how's the uh, how's the body feel after running one hundred and sixteen k's? Oh, one hundred and sixteen. Wow, it was um, you know, it took me a while to <laughs> took me a while to recover. I was pretty busted on the the Monday. I had in my mind. Um, on the Sunday when we finished that I was going to work on the Monday. Yeah, no chance. No. So, uh, uh, you know, just recovered well with uh, with the nephew. Um, we just took it easy on that day, but it took me probably, I wouldn't say two weeks, but it took me a full week to walk properly. And then um, that next week, uh, you know, finally start moving and, and getting into the swing of things. So, yeah. yeah. Um, you guys did the whole 116 on the Sunday? Or did you uh, start said, like no, Saturday so it was night? a twenty-four hour event. Okay. Yeah. So we started at uh, eight o'clock on Saturday morning at Shawncliffe Pier, and then we uh, we got a twenty k track uh, circuit that goes up to Scarborough. Yep. Um, and then it was just back and forth. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. I know uh, this. I know that Shawncliffe Pier. Yeah. Well, I go out there a lot. Yeah. And the Hornybrook Bridge. It's a nice area. Don't like the Hornybrook Bridge. I think we walked over that one hundred and sixteen k's yeah. would have been pretty good uh, with that view, but yeah, no, it was beautiful in the morning and that. Yeah. And it, and it couldn't have been a, a better day or a better night, you know. So we had uh, we had a we had a group of uh, close family and friends turn up on um, the Saturday morning. Uh, one of the elders came from uh, from Aspey and he did a little prayer in that for us just to send us on our um, our journey and, and make sure we do you know return safely and uh, protected as we go through. And um, yeah, we took off. We got to the ten k, which was at Woody Point, and we run into. I think we ran into like a few hundred people there. Uh, it was <laughs> bloody awesome. Uh, we had uh, people there doing uh, other fundraisers. Uh, oh, they were all there to support you. All there to support us. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, and they raised another another ten grand. So we had Footstop, uh, Footstop Redcliffe um, doing a train the trainer thing there, which was organised because Jaden, that's where Jaden works at. Um, Red, uh, Redcliffe Dolphins. They had a tent up. They were doing the barbecue, uh, breakfast barbecue, and all that. We had a coffee van. It was bloody awesome, That's and good. then uh, uh, we missed Channel Seven, so they turn up as well. Yeah, uh, we missed that event, so we take off, um, and then they catch us at Scarborough, and um, they do an interview with Jay, and um, yeah, the exposure we got from that was was uh, phenomenal. So yeah. Um, yeah, That's awesome, man. Good on you. Um, I guess we'll uh, we've we've been going for a while, but I, I just want to round it out with a couple of things. So, what's your best advice? For young athletes, and when I say young athletes, I mean like not necessarily kids with a dream of playing footy, but like young athletes who are on the cusp of maybe getting a contract, yep. or have just got it. Because it seems to be like a, a spot where a lot of trouble happens. You know, they're between sixteen and twenty years old. Yep. What's your advice for young athletes at that age? Oh, uh, look, uh, you know, my my oldest is in that. You know, Alizé is seventeen, and my advice to him always he's you know he's in the he's in the mix of of a few things, and um, like I always just say to him and, and other kids, his mates, and, and those that are trying to strive is that um, you know you just got to continue to work hard. There's no there's no um, there's nothing better than work ethic. Okay, you know you have to work hard at at at, at, um, at those things that you need and. Um, and you've got to surround yourself with the right people, you know. So um, the, the influences that you have around you, it's up to you to, to um, I guess, go 
and, and um, surround yourself with those the people that you want to succeed with. Well, guess, it's you know? it's funny uh, and stay away from girls. Yeah, <laughs> stay away from girls. <laughs> All years. Um, All years. Yeah, that's right. No, so it's funny. I uh, I often. I love this saying, if you're not inspired by the people that are around you, then you're around the wrong people. Yep. And, uh, you know, I use it in the last podcast, but I I truly believe that regardless of what the people around you have achieved, that there should be something from all those people that inspire you to be better. Yep. And if you surround yourself with those kind of people, then you'll constantly achieve greater things. Greater things, of course. Yeah. Um, and uh, and and last lastly, for... Any athletes or people in general, but athletes specifically, um, experiencing adversity. Yep, I've been through. Yeah, been plenty. through plenty of it. Yeah. Obviously, as we, as we've discussed, and yep. probably some, plenty that we haven't. But um, what's your advice for for uh, you know like the athlete that's sitting there thinking that's the end, but he's probably just had an ankle surgery. Oh, uh, look, it's just uh, to I guess to for me. Saying that, if, say if it was my son, I'd be saying that because uh, he's been through some adversity as well, you know, and it's just uh, staying focused and uh, having your mind on on um, on your goals, I guess, and um, you know, doing what you can to, to achieve them. So, um, you know, you draw back on those hard times because those hard times uh, you're down in the pits and that, but that's what gets you through um, to be to, to to be a better person or to be a Better at at, um, at anything you know that you that you put your mind to. So that that would be my thing. Yeah. Stay focused. Stay, stay motivated. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Stay the course. Yeah, for sure. Well, Rob, I really appreciate you joining us today, man. It's been a, it's been a pleasure. Um, I didn't know too much besides the text message I got yeah, about awesome. uh, about you, and um, and it's been awesome talking to you, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks, thanks very much. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Thank you no for having me. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time.